My name is Abigail. I'm on the trust and safety team at the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, my team is primarily responsible for um, facilitating the, the creation, the enforcement, and um, the support, any kind of support for the Universal Code of Conduct, as well as the enforcement guidelines. So today, I'm here to talk about the UCOC and mostly how we can support African communities, um, most of the communities that are here, and to just also hear, get your input and feedback about what's working, what's not working, what can we fix, how can we better support you, all of you in your work that you do in your communities. Um, yeah, next slide, please. Oh, I do have my clicker. Yeah. My apologies. No worries. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay, there we go. First of all, I just wanted to do a check-in. How many people, I'm assuming that everybody knows about the UCOC, but how many people know about the UCOC, the Universal Code of Conduct? The Universal Code of Conduct. Okay. Okay, I'm glad we did that check-in. That's good to know. Um, so I guess as a refresher for some people and for first timers, the UCOC um, is a minimum baseline policy that defines um, a minimum set of guidelines of expected and unacceptable behavior on our platforms across all of Wikimedia um, platforms and products. It was called for, it was one of the, um, the 2030 movement strategy recommendations to provide safety and inclusion on our platforms. And um, it was ratified by the Board of Trustees in 2020. Um, the Code of Conduct was drafted by a diverse group of mostly community members, and it applies equally to all Wikimedians. After the creation of the code of the, U the UCOC, I'm going to be referring to it going forward as a UCOC. I hope that works for everyone. Um, the, there was a need to create a set of enforcement guidelines to kind of um, outline the processes um, and the pathways to enforce the policy. So the enforcement guidelines were created um, that mostly highlight the principles for filing and processing UCOC violations, um, as well as providing the enforcement pathways um, for how you can report um, UCOC violations. The enforcement guidelines went through two community votes. Um, there was a first vote, which received an, uh, a majority approval, but there were some specific concerns about some sections of the code that um, people wanted to get clarification or needed it to get fixed. So the another committee was set up to create a revised set of enforcement guidelines. And um, that was ratified by the community um, earlier this year in January um, with 76% uh, support. I hope all, if not some of you here, voted, uh, participated in that vote. Um, the enforcement guidelines consist of uh, mainly two sections. There's preventive and there's pro, um, responsive work. Preventive work um, refers to just work that we do to ideally prevent um policy violations on the platform even so mostly around training and awareness and then responsive work involves like how to file and process violations okay um so i really wanted to highlight the importance of the ucoc for small and medium-sized communities since um i believe that most of the communities represented here are predominantly small or medium sized. And um, I think that the UCOC is particularly important for such communities. Um, some of the reasons are listed here. I think the, the first one is that, you know, most communities, over 50%, more than 50% of um, Wikipedias do not have any form of local policy or code of conduct. And that mostly involves like small or medium communities. So you see that mostly large wikis have some form of policy, um, but small or medium-sized communities usually do not have that. 
um, most smaller communities also do not have app comms or any form of like local enforcement processes. Um, they also just usually have fewer admins. Um, there's also just been an uptake in the number of users experiencing harassment in both our online and offline spaces, as well as the, um, it's just been observed that sometimes having like small size communities have this familiarity amongst themselves that makes people sometimes uncomfortable to report inappropriate behaviors. Um, so all of these are some of the, ma the many reasons why the UCOC, I personally believe, is particularly important for small or medium-sized communities. So now, um, I want to hear from you. I'm very, very curious to know what uh, some of the safety challenges you've been experiencing on, on your platform. I'm sorry, my bad. Sorry. Yes, thank you. Um, so yeah, I want to know what are some of the safety challenges you've been experiencing on your home wiki, your local wiki, or your local communities? I'm gonna stand here. Yes, please go ahead, Lori. Where's the other microphone? We do not, but you can take this. And I guess I have to do this for him. Yes. Yeah. Right. I, I, it's loud enough. Right. It's okay. okay. So, I'll just stand by you. Uh, one of the challenges that we had is um, we experienced, very experienced with Ian's in our community, uh, harassing um, uh, newbies, basically, because they are making small, small mistakes. And it puts us in a very difficult position because you don't know how to deal with this person because, first of all, they are an administrator in that language, you know, and they are experienced, like they've got this great cred. How do you deal with that person, you know? And, uh, and yeah, and they don't want to come to conferences like this, you know? Our community have many experienced um, in our community. Yeah. So that is some of the challenges and you don't know how to deal with that. Yeah, no, thank you for sharing. I think that's something we've heard um a lot as well. Um anybody wants to share? Okay. Um I'm gonna can you please pass it here? <laughs> Oh, thank you. And I'll find as close as I can. Okay. Uh, thank you, So for me, for my community, I think that would be a good idea to find what you are very well for making a competition or we have events. Um, and then we have newbies, movement, maybe I would say not newbies or intermediates, um, uh, community members. And if you, for instance, you're like, oh, there's a competition and we would like to say the winner who has done so it's so, so much articles, let's say for 500 articles or 200 articles, they will they'll say, oh, that fate, why are you doing that? No, like we need to add. But then in the, in the same case, like you wonder why are you, what's the issue there? Because this is a community and a voluntary, voluntary, so why was the problem there? So they think, they come with a perception like it should be paid by using that. And the price oh. is so much. So that's some of the challenges we experience there. Okay. Anybody, I think um someone wants to share here, please. Thank you. Uh, my name is Martin and I'm from Namibia. I think one of the challenges that we faced is um, uh, one of the challenges that we face is uh, when um, when we have uh, new and um, that are just coming up 
and then you have um you have administrators we have most of the people administrators that have been with us now that they have received that they do this thing to their project or something you will see the co the comments in the administrators um in the administrator section trying to comment on this and then what's the shutting down the way and that's the hardest thing ever yeah please yeah, thank you. Um, in my community, which is um, very well with the folks, um, um, in tackling such issues that um, chief coordination actually uh, have um, patrollers, we respond to some issues that um, that can bring the kind of um, misunderstanding. For example, if you make a mistake on the and um, they see uh, this mistake is somehow wrong. Okay, they come talk to you on, on the top page, give you guidelines how you can better do it. Then they sit back and watch if you learn. So if you do it a second time, they come to you, talk to you. Myself, I do that a lot. I talk to you in a similar manner, and I manage that. And if you still make some mistake, I'll try and get a local contact and talk to you locally. If I can talk to you locally. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'll talk to you in the language you understand, which is a local language. Then I'll explain to you this is how to do this. <laughs> but if you still continue to be making some mistake, then I can be able to escalate it to, um, so that the administrator can also come in to say, oh, no, this doesn't happen this way. Doesn't have that. So, so that's how we handle such situation. But in the case where an administrator himself or herself is harassing or um, harassing, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I don't to do <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all right. Um, I think, oh, do we have someone? Okay, I think we're going to uh, move on here because of time. Thank Thank you all very much for sharing. I think a recurring theme I saw was just the admin newbie relationship and also mostly, it sounds like it's mostly online editing um, related. Um, I do have another question, more like a follow-up question to this, is how do you think the UCOC and enforcement guidelines have been helping or not helping some of these challenges that you've mentioned? Um, um, Probably in putting it is in putting this in a broader context of just even like local policies, if they exist on your um in your local wiki or community, do you think they've been helping or not helping with some of these challenges you flagged? I see a lot of confused faces. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is more deeper. It's more about uh, behavior. It's more about the person's it's personality. It's something that huh. uh, I think we need something in I mean, they cheat more than the universal code of conduct because they are a Wikipedia, you can see, you know them. And the most important thing, they've got street cred. <laughs> I think an yeah, emphasis on street cred, yeah. Yes, that is important that you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, but I have the power to harass other Wikipedians telling you this. So how do we deal with you? you know, yeah. So anyway, yeah. And I think there's also like a cultural context here too. And I think um I well we do not have a lot of time because there's so much to unpack here, and probably I'll probably find time to do that with you one on one. Um, and I think that's why we are really hoping to be able to localize the UCOC, um, because there's a lot of, this is mostly like high level universal, um, but there's a lot of different cultural contexts that is not captured in the UCOC that hopefully with, okay. <laughs> With the localization of the UCOC, we can be able to capture some of that context. Um, just one more person, and then we can move on. Yeah. Okay. Let's do this. Here. Hi. Um, 
I want to refer more in, uh, in relation to this montage, which is regularly confronted to some issues. One thing I found was complicated is that we never really hear about the cases that were successfully dealt with obviously for privacy reasons. So we we never hear about them. However, all the things that were not fixed. Um, where victims are not happy or heard that another victim was not happy, this circulates quite a lot. And that brings somehow um, a feeling that it's not working, even though I, I may be rather optimistic that it is. But we always, it's like the comments, the rating for hotel on Google, you only see the people complaining because it went wrong, not the people who were happy. So I, I don't know how this can be fixed. But that makes me dubious when I think uh, of uh, orienting someone who got a problem to look up because then I hear about this case that didn't work, this case that didn't work, and so on. Yeah. So I think how to fix that. That's a good point, and that's something that's I think good feedback, and that's something for us to think about. Um, for the sake of the presentation, I'm going to keep going. Okay. Um. But thank you, thanks to all of you for sharing. I wanted to just do a quick um, exercise to test awareness. I think we have to move really quick since I have just about 10 minutes remaining. Um, but I'm just really curious how people would react to some of these scenarios, especially in terms of how you would report cases or um, instances or scenarios of harm or, or abuse on your platforms, both online and offline. Um, so the first scenario we have is you see someone threatening to physically harm another person in an, in an edit war, on an article, how would you report this um, this case? All right. Would you? Can you just shout? Yes, please. So for me, it's easy for me to put someone I've spoken to personally. So the Indian person I probably would do is as well. That's what I would do. <laughs> okay um for something like this um since oh please go ahead i'm sorry uh, when it comes to something that has to do with our uh, physical um entanglement that uh, somebody will harm me physically um the next thing i'm going to do first thing is to report him or her to the nearest authorities right? because it's yes physical. and online i'm going to report to the uh, appropriate quarters what are the in your case what would you say is the appropriate um person or group to report to okay, first of all i'm going to uh, report to the admin okay which is identified uh, i'll report to the person that i report to the department so, okay yeah, thank you. Thank you all for sharing. I think um, you're very right as in doing the first thing, the first right thing to do, since there is a physical threat of harm involved, to report to your local um, police or local law enforcement authority. And usually we recommend that um, your second point of action, point of contact should be um, the Trust and Safety Team at the Foundation. When it comes to any form of physical violence, threat of harm, we do not want to burden the community with that because it can get very messy and very ugly. Um, so we, that's something that the, we do have a workflow, uh, workflow for that, which is emergency at, at um, wikimedia.org. It's probably going to be in the next slide um, for any kind of online or offline threat of harm that you receive from a fellow um, wiki, media, Wikipedia. Okay, um, you notice an editor harassing another editor as they make good faith edits, reverting them and mocking them. Mm. What would you do? Yeah, do you want, I'm going to come to you, sorry. Again, mostly we're talking in the name of the disembarrage. We try uh, to report in a group of this page so that we have the the the, the counseling the recommendation and what from the rest of the group, which seems to be the best thing to do. But then, when it comes to reacting online, I must say privately, I I refrain from doing it because I know there is a lot of anger and crisis 
between the domestic and the counter domains. Um, and I don't want to get involved. So it sucks, but I don't go there. And I feel ashamed very often. And I just don't wait. Yeah. I can understand. And I think you're right. I think this is something that your first point of contact should be like your local admins or um any um if you have local enforcement structures um in your community, because this is something the community is well equipped to handle. Um I'm gonna move on to the next scenario. Someone in your community posts in your telegram group that people from a certain ethnic group should not be editing and that they are not welcome to join discussions. I think this is something that um, would also go to like your local admin or local enforcement structures if they exist. I'm gonna go quickly through all of this. Um, you see a message of an editor threatening to or actually exposing the personal identifiable information of another editor. This is something that, um, this, this mostly falls into like the Duxon category. You can report locally, but this is something that trust, you can also escalate to trust and safety if it's necessary and urgent, um, especially if it's information that you just do not want to have out there. Um, okay. <laughs> Someone threatens to sue you if you don't edit an article in your favor. Uh, we do, this happens more often than you would hope. Um, and, oh, happened to you this week. See, right there, case in point. Um, this is something that goes to the legal team at the foundation. So legal at, legal at wikimedia.org, um, any kind of legal threats. Um, threatening to sue you, threatening to report you locally to like a law enforcement agency or anything. This is all in the legal, you know, their house. So like you report to them. Okay, thanks for indulging me in that exercise. Um, I just want to quickly go through some of the processes that we have listed in the enforcement guidelines about how to enforce the UCOC in your community. Um, is usually um, recommended, and this is not an exhaustive um, list, by the way, so please go read the enforcement guidelines. Um, it is available on MetaWiki, I think Governance Wiki as well, and translated in about um, 35 languages or more. Um, but it's mostly recommended that, you know, APCOMs, like what we've mentioned already here, APCOMs, advanced right holders like stewards, can enforce local policies or the UCOC in a decentralized manner. Um, a panel of local admins, you know, can have a discussion or deliberation publicly um, to enforce policies, as well as just local contributors, you know, individual contributors. You can start um, an RFC or some kind of um, discussion on your local, um, in, both online and offline to discuss um, issues and come to an agreement. By type of violations, again, this is also not an exhaustive list, but just to give you examples, um, if there is a threat of physical violence or harm, like we've already mentioned, that comes to the Wiki Media Trust and Safety Team. If it's an on wiki violation, um, depending on the what setup you have within your community, it goes to look um, the the admin stewards um, or whatever your local enforcement structure um, you have that exist. And then the U4C. I'm gonna explain what the U4C is in a bit. Um, off wiki violations, um, app harm or the U4C. And then violations at in-person events like this one, that would usually go to like the local trust and safety team, volunteer trust and safety team that exists. Um, according to like the conference rule or the friendly space policy. And then ultimately, um, that's something that can also be escalated to the trust and safety team or the UD4C. This is also like um, kind of a process that in terms of like how to think about reporting a UCOC violation. Um, I'm going to go through this very quickly, but you know, if you observe, um, if you see some kind of behavior or action activity or, um, or speech 
that you think could be a violation, I think the first thing to do is just like assess the behavior or conduct. So just really analyze and understand, you know, how it explicitly violates the use you see whatever local policies you have that exist. Um, and then identify or define the category it falls into, and then report according to like the local enforcement um, process or structure that exists. And then if that doesn't exist or fails, you report to the U4C. The U4C, um, which I've been referencing a lot, um, the full meaning of that acronym is the Universal Code of Conduct Coordinating Committee. Um, it is defined uh, in the enforcement guidelines and mandated as the ultimate um, committee um, community body that is responsible for enforcing the Universal Code of Conduct. Um, its purpose is to serve as a final recourse in the um, in the case of systemic failures or just um, for communities that do not have any existing um, enforcement structures. You can also always report um, policy violations to the U4C. It currently does not exist. We are in the process of building that committee. So right now we're going through a process of building the, the charter for the committee. Um, we just had a consultation on that. And then um, the building committee is revising that charter. And then we are going to have an election um, and a call for um, candidates to be on the U4C very soon. So I encourage all of you to participate. I do have this question, but I only have one minute remaining. So we're not going to go through this, but. I'll encourage you to think about this. Um, find me throughout the, the conference to talk about it because this is something that I'm very um, passionate about and would really want to understand how to support communities. Again, given the cultural context and differences, um, it's not gonna be a one size fits all. And I'm happy to like sit down with people to like talk through this. Um, the current stage of the UCOC project, I know most of you have UCOC fatigue. This has been going on for a while um, since 20, well, 2019 even. Um, currently, we're getting to the end, almost there. Um, like I said earlier, we are hopefully going to have a, a vote on the U4C charter soon, um, before this year ends or early next year. And then early next year, we, we will set up the U4C committee who, which will be the final and force of the U4, um, the UCOC, sorry. Um, so yeah, here are some of the ways that you can participate in the UCOC enforcement processes. Um, like I've mentioned already, there's the vote on the charter coming up, hopefully um, in November. The current timeline was November, um, but hopefully before the year ends or early next year, or um, and also participating in the U4C candidate election early 2024. We do have regional distribution, 50% and 50% community at large. So all of you here can um, participate in that election, i.e. standing um, for an election if needed, if you're interested. So please look out for communication on that. Um, so yeah, that's it. Um, thank you very much for participating um, in this conversation. I hope you found it useful. If you have, we don't have time for questions, unfortunately, but sure, yeah, let's talk about lunch. Find me, I'll be around throughout the conference so we can talk more, but thank you. Oh.